jump up, people, are you ready? Well, it's all smiles around the Caribbean and the rest of the world for the West Indies. A fantastic series victory, 2-0 against Bangladesh in what many people predicted would have been the other way around before the series started. Hello, everyone. Welcome to On Tour. We look back at that West Indies series in Bangladesh. Today, climaxing a fantastic end to a test series that produced everything. Double centuries, centuries, five-wicket hauls. And in the end, a victory to the West Indies by some 17 runs in a cliffhanger at Maipur. A look at the scorecard to tell the tale. The West Indies, 409, and they were 41 for three overnight. Eventually, they were bowled out for 117. Bangladesh, 296, and set 231, made 213 for the West Indies to win by 17 runs. Now, Bonner made 38, again, top scoring. Uh, Joshua De Silva, important partnership, he made 20. The West Indies could have been bowled up for under 100 had not been for that little partnership between himself and Bonner. Islam, 4 for 36. The spinners are now in in the West Indies. And Hassan continues to be consistent, 3 for 34. Set that to 13 now. They got off to a good start, Bangladesh. It was Tamim Iqbal who made 50. He actually put on a pretty good stand there for that 50. And it was the intervention of the captain, Craig Braffitt, who came on brought that partnership he actually removed both of those uh, opening batsmen he got three for 25 warwick and three for 47 but in the end it was rakeem cornwall four for 105 nine wickets in the test match what a tremendous performance from him and unfortunately Hassan miraz who almost led them home was the last man out for 31. well so much to talk about but the west indies will be smiling and coming back to the caribbean feeling very very satisfied Let's go straight to the panel. Tino Best, former Barbados and West Indies fast bowler. Johnny Barron, our international correspondent. And of course, Fazer Mohammed, our regional correspondent. Gentlemen, um, I'll start first of all with you, Tino. You know, this is a victory not since 2012, apparently, that the West Indies have won in Asia, 2-0. Uh, and I know they won in Zimbabwe, 1-0, and I think it was 2017. But this victory would give them a great sense of satisfaction. Yeah, for sure, Barry. Um, first of all, you know, congratulations to them. I thought they played a magnificent game. Um, the the resolute and to go down there with a team without the big names of the captain, um, Jason Holder, um, Bavo Hitmeyer, and, and, and the lot, and to come off against a very strong uh, Bangladesh team, um, is tremendous, Barry. And 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 kudos has to go to the coach as well and the and the staff. I thought that the living in the bubble um, have really made guys. Who want to play the cricket focus, and and and, and that's it. And they, they were focused, and, and that was terrific for them. Yeah, look at those scenes of celebrations, the scenes of jubilation there by the West Indies team. Um, I'm going to pick up on what you just said, Tino, about living in the bubble has made uh, some players focus. Johnny Barron. Some people might say that living in the bubble has actually weeded out the real people who want to play this game of Test cricket. Would you agree with that? Um, it certainly concentrates the mind. I mean, this is the most fantastic Test Series win by West Indies. You know, Bangladesh have been unbeaten at home uh, since 2015, apart from one defeat uh, against Sri Lanka. The likes of South Africa, of course, have gone there, India, England, uh, and haven't won, and Australia. It's an amazing win. And I think you're right. You know, that, that team spirit was bonded in England in that series earlier, uh, later last year, I should say, where they did fantastically well, were unlucky not to retain the Wisden tr Trophy. Very tough in New Zealand, of course. Nobody really wins there. But here, the team spirit has been just fantastic throughout, and that was a key factor in this win. Pazzo, you're never short on words. I'm sure that you are not necessarily speechless, but surprised perhaps that the West Indies have won. How do you feel about it? Well, of course, very surprised because I was one of those who said 2-0 easily for Bangladesh. But uh, talking about uh, using words, let me use Tino's word because he talked about uh, resolute. And I think that's what we saw uh, from the West Indies this time around. A real resolve, a real fight, because let, let's put it in perspective again. Uh, a week ago, uh, a week and, and a day ago, uh, it was generally expected the West Indies would uh, capitulate and lose uh, the first test match, having been set that yeah. target of 395. And as it turned out, they won and, and you know, won handsomely with 
with Kyle Mays and that historic innings. And then coming into the second test match again on the final day, it could have gone either way, 17 wickets falling. And once more, the West Indies showed character. Um, no doubt uh, over time, we'll, we'll properly put this in perspective. But uh, it is a tremendous effort in these circumstances. And, and, and again, to use Tino's word, resolve, character, uh, that, that sort of determination, that sort of willingness to fight, uh, they showed all of that. Well, look, let's, let's bite straight into the day, Tino. I want to start first at the top, the captaincy of Craig Brathwaite. Um, he, he got a lot of praise in this test series. Uh, he got three wickets today, three for 25. We've not, this is not the first time we've seen Craig Brathwaite with the intervention of his bowling, break partnerships and pick up wickets at crucial times. But I want to talk to, about his captaincy. What did you think and make of his captaincy in this test series and generally today as the West Indies held on to win the game? Yeah, I, I thought his captaincy and his leadership was, was on point. Um, look, when you go from one, the most experienced player in the team, um, you know, you've got to lead from the front. Um, when you don't have a, the, the, the original leader, Jason Holder, who, who obviously didn't go on the tour for, for whatever reason. And for, for Craig Baffey to keep the guys focused was terrific. This young man was always a leader. I first played with him um, when he was 16 years old um, in the Barbados team. And he was always a very quiet, um, soft-spoken person, um, young man. And his leadership uh, has grown. He's, he's grown into a very good leader. He understands when to, to, to bowl bowlers and when to pull them. But this is a tremendous feat. And, and to, to, to play with a team that is, is basically under pressure. Guys are playing for their livelihoods in terms of they know that these selectors might go back and, and, and pick the big boys again. Guys are fighting. This this team reminds me of of the 2005 team that went to Sri Lanka. I know we didn't we didn't win the series, but we fought every single Test match, and this is what this team showed. It showed character. And and Craig Baffin reminds me of someone like Sylvester Joseph, who was a very good leader. It's just that he did not get to lead the big boys in in, in that in that sense of, of of winning a series. But well done to him. I think he was tremendous, and and, and he led from the front. I'll fast forward to Fazir now. Fazir, uh, you look at this side, you look at what they have achieved. Who are the players that are uh, likely to stay on and who are the ones that are likely to come back in? Because that's going to be a big bit of uh, a big bone of contention now. Uh, you know, Sri Lanka is supposed to come. I'm not sure if they will come. There's some debate about that. We've got other big series this year. Who are the ones likely to go? Who are likely to stay? And that's it, uh, exactly, Barry. Everything is up in the air right now when we're talking about what's going to happen with the West Indies, uh, what should be an historic international schedule of four visiting teams. But uh, there will be some time to consider, I think, uh, when you look at it overall, uh, that, that middle order, I think uh, Shane Mosley will have to go back uh, to the regional game. It's always tough to, to come in in a situation like that, but he had uh, four innings and, and didn't really get the opportunity. But uh, then you've got Nkrumah Bona. It's going to be difficult uh, to leave him out now. Kyle Mayers has a double failure in the second test match but how do you leave out someone who scored a match winning double hundred in his first test match so there you have a couple of players already uh, but, but we see that uh, of course uh, Shane Dowrit seems to be out of the game completely so no challenge uh, to Joshua De Silva uh, who is really uh, cementing his place as a wicketkeeper batsman uh, the bowling department uh, again will depend on the conditions because you wouldn't expect when Sri Lanka come to town or whoever comes to town, that the West Indies are going to be playing on tracks that will be as spin friendly. So you don't expect to see uh, two or three spinners or even uh, Craig Brathwit himself having a bowl. Uh, to answer that question about uh, the leadership, I expect Jason Holder uh, to be the captain once again, uh, because I, I, again, you, do, you don't just simply make a change automatically because of the, the unexpected success uh, that Craig Bradford brought to this team by his role, especially on the last day in taking those three wickets as well. So those names come immediately to mind. It's a very competitive environment, which is good for West Indies cricket, uh, but it's important that the West Indies build on this and not just simply look at this as another one-off and then struggle the rest of the way. Oh, very well said. Okay, look, we're going to take a break on on tour. When we come back, Johnny Barron is going to break down the stats for us. Where does this lie in the, uh, of course, history of West Indies cricket? We'll be back on tour. Stay with us. Welcome back to On Tour. The West Indies winning by some 17 runs there, Maipur. What a test match. Just to recap the scores for you. Windy's 4-9 and 117. Bangladesh 296. Set 231 to win 
they were bowled out for 213. In the end, it was uh, the man of the match, none other than Raheem Cornwall, having the honor of taking the catch and winning it for the West Indies with the ball and with his hands as well. Um, Johnny, we'll we'll talk to we'll hear from Raheem Cornwall a bit later. But where does this lie? Where does this test match stack in the line of stats uh, in terms of this victory? Um, I think it it's it's a it's a it's a quite wonderful victory. It's a quite wonderful series for West Indies. They've played absolutely beautifully throughout the course of it, and that chase in the first test was incredible. And they you know they they did enough in this test match to win, and and that two twenty ahead proved proved successful but i think as far as wins concerned i think it's it's right up there you know you you have to look at two things one is the west indies record away from home which is pretty poor of course there was that win under where, where tino best played in 2012 13 in bangladesh then they won in zimbabwe but that has been it for west indies on their travels and then from a home perspective you know bangladesh simply don't lose at home just one loss in their last five years and all the big guns as we've said before have come there and haven't taken a series win. It's absolutely incredible. And I, you, you know, the, the whole side has to take enormous credit. To be balanced, no Shakib Al Hassan. Uh, would you perhaps say to say to the uh, Bangladesh fans that you look, it was it was because you were without this star player that you weren't able to hold on? If he played, do you think it would have made a difference? I think it would have made an enormous difference. Would would the West Indies have chased down 395 in that first test with Shakib Al Hassan, especially the way in which he'd gone in those in that ODI series? I, I very much doubt it. That would have been a big tall order, and those valuable runs in that sort of top order would have been a key factor. And bear in mind, you know, even without him, you know, Bangladesh weren't a million miles away. Just 17 runs in the in the end, and uh, Mehdi Hassan Miraz was was there almost there at the end. But but boy, what a catch from Rocky and Cornwall. Yeah, what a catch from Cornwall. You look back at that catch and I don't think it got enough credit. I mean, um, everyone was focused on the victory, but he could have simply not have held on to that and that could have made the world a difference. Raheem Cornwall, what a tall, towering figure in the West Indies team. Tino, we discussed him yesterday, but he's deserving of discussion again. Nine wickets in the test match. He almost became the player for the second time to get another 10, hall, 10 for Hall. Uh, but he got nine, and that was good enough to get in the man of the match. Your thoughts on Rakeem Cornwall and his difference and how he bowled in this test? Yeah, brilliant. Uh, he bowled the right lanes, he bowled the right lines, and he was getting spin and bounce from in front of the batsman. And I thought he was very patient. Uh, something he said in the interview yesterday, Barry, he was just saying, look, um, he just wanted to be patient, he wanted to be consistent. And that's what you, all you can ask for from a player. Um, the, as I tell you, Barry, he just got to work on his mobility. And he has good hands. He catches the ball, but he's, he's not a, a, a poor cricketer. You understand? He's just a big unit. And look, he's a beautiful yeah. cricketer. He's a beautiful human being. And he done, he's done a terrific job to take nine wickets. And look, I always said, F players, F spinners go to Bangladesh and they can't get wickets. They're not spinners. <laughs> and well, both of our can as well. Um, look, so I, I thought the West Indies played great. I just thought that they were a little disappointed with, with only scoring 117. But then when you look at the surface bar, you can't be too harsh on them because Bangladesh did play hard. They did come back very hard. And look, all credit to West Indies because they're playing with a depleted team. And they just show you that West Indies cricket, it, it, it has nothing to do with the talent. It ha it, West Indies cricketers are very talented. They, 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 yeah. they just need right structures and right programs and right people behind them to push them. And these young men from the Caribbean can be world, world champions again. Uh, Fazio, you have not been a big uh, fan of Cornwall, but he's delivered in Asia, delivered in, in India against Afghanistan. He's delivered uh, in Bangladesh. Your thoughts on Cornwall's place in this team consistently going forward, um, seeing that Ross and Chase might come back as well to be one of the hospital all-rounders? And that's going to be an interesting one. Well, well, I think that catch was the exclamation point because the issue with Rakeem Cornwall has been that mobility issue. And, and nobody's questioning his value as a bowler and indeed as a lower order batsman, if he can ever actually get things going in the lower order. But as Tino said correctly, a very safe pair of hands and to go down low and take that sharp catch as he did. Uh, and, and indeed, if he had dropped it, we would all be saying, well, there you go. You have the big man there at slip. What do you expect? He's so, yeah. so big, he can't get down. But the fact is, he did. And and, and I think yeah. that is that is the essence of it. Uh, whatever I would have said, in fact, I 
made it very clear. I didn't think that he would have been uh, a good look for the West Indies to be in the test team, but he's taken his chances and he's proven myself and maybe a few others wrong in that regard and all power to him for continuing to do that. Whatever his motivation is, if it comes from within, if it comes from without, if it comes from the cricket, from the critics uh, or whatever it is, the fact is that he has been able to respond in the best way possible. And that's what you'd like to see from all of our cricketers. Yes, um, he has responded in that best way. Uh, I, I want your thoughts as well, too, on Nkrumah Bonner, because you, you cannot leave out Bonner in this uh, situation. He actually got the man of the series for his, his knocks. Um, Kyle Mears didn't perform in this test, but was it close for you in terms of who would have won the man of the series? It was close because I thought uh, Rakeem Cornwall uh, would have been a contender for that uh, as well. But but, but when, when you look at it in, in, in perspective, uh, Nkrumah Bonner uh, played such vital innings uh, along the way. And I think it's going to, I, I can't see him being left out uh, for, for the next series, whether it's against Sri Lanka or anyone else for that matter. Because again, in every outstanding test team, you need that type of player, whether it's a Chateshwa Pujara, whether it's Amanas Labushain, uh, whether it's in the previous time, Shivnarayan Chanderpaul, Jimmy Adams, Larry Gomes, we can go on and on and on. They won't necessarily excite you with the style of accumulating their runs, but test cricket is also about resilience. And I think that's what Nkrumah Bonner brings to a middle order, that you can build an innings around him, always in the belief it won't always happen, but always in the belief that he is going to try his best to hold things together. And that's what you need in test cricket. Now, I, I go to, to our international correspondent. Where does this leave Bangladesh? Uh, what changes are they going to make? And how do you see them now going forward? They also have a pretty tough year and a pretty tough calendar in international cricket. Johnny Barron. Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, I think that there are several doubts over this top order of Bangladesh. It's been in uh, trouble all the way through, hasn't it? You know, the, the lower order, largely thanks to uh, Hassan Miraz has, has, has really got them out of jail. They've been 144 for four in the first test. Again, they were struggling in the second test. And it's those lower order runs that has been the, the big saving grace. Shakib obviously will come back into this side once he gets fit again, it will be a big factor. But otherwise, Bangladesh are going to have to make some, some big, big changes, you feel, at the top of the order. All right, thank you so much, uh, gentlemen. When we come back on, on tour, we're going to hear from the star performers. We've got Cornwall. We've got the captain, Craig Braffitt, and we'll also hear a little bit from Nkrumah Bonner. When we come back, on tour. Wendy's in the land of, put up your hand, it's time to party. Turn it up to the top, it's time to jump up, people, are you ready? ready? Wendy's in the land of, put up your hand, it's time to party. We're back for the final segment of On Tour. The West Indies winning there by some 17 runs. Congratulations, tremendous test series. Some victories that people will be happy and smiling around the world for a long time to come. Let's hear from some of the personalities now. Of course, the man of the series was in Bonner. The man of the match was Rakeem Cornwall. And the captain was Craig Brathwick. Uh, Rakeem, uh, congratulations, first of all. Outstanding performance with the ball. Yeah, thank you. I um, think it was a good performance. And the uh, whole team have a good energy from day one. And coaching staff backs us. And we just go and do the job. Yes, sir. you showed when you played that three-day warm-up match that when you picked up those five wicket haul in that warm-up match, you posed the greater threat to the bow, to the batsman, especially in these conditions. You enjoy bowling in these conditions? Yeah, uh, once the condition is giving you a little bit of spin, I enjoy it. I'm a spin bowler. I have to try and spin the ball. And I just back myself and put the balls in the right ears. You wanted to spend time in the middle. You batted for a longer period of time. Was that uh, one thing which was in your mind when you, you came to, uh, this, to Bangladesh? Yeah, I'm speaking to the senior guys, you know, it's important to keep to have patience in Bangladesh um, because of the nature of the wicket. Yeah, you played the spinners well, you played the seamers well, and when you did get set there, uh, you didn't throw it away. You put a really big price on your wicket. Well, after all, it says cricket, uh, you have to put a price on your wicket, our bowler style, um, all day. So it's important for us to let them do the same. Right, it's fantastic win for you, fantastic performance, and I wish you all the very best. Congratulations one more time for an outstanding performance. Thank you. Um, you know, I would say this is a team effort, you know, from the, you know, during the one-day series, you know, we were having some practice sessions across the road and obviously looking on, you know, the one-day team not doing, you know, not doing that well. And, you know, we, we always had a plan and, you know, we went out there and worked hard and enjoyed it and we came out on top. 
You're talking about plans. What about that stroke of genius when you came on to bowl, uh, when uh, the opening stand of 59, and uh, you picked up not just one, but two, both the openers? Yeah, I mean, I wasn't surprised. Um, you know, you know my skill with the ball. So, you know, I just wanted to come on and keep it tight. And, you know, I, I was thankful for, for that. Right. Did you also know that uh, this is the first win for West Indies in Asia in a series of two test match or more since 2012? That is a great achievement. Yeah, that's nice. Um, you know, I think it's a, a very good accomplishment, you know, for, for these guys, you know, uh, coming, coming over here, obviously with all the, you know, protocols in order and, you know, we, 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 we work hard. Great stuff and congratulations to Phil Simmons and the entire team there. I must also congratulate Ian Bishop because I know he gets a lot of stick when he travels around the world uh, when the West Indies are losing. They certainly let him have it. And he was quite ecstatic today and did a, a tremendous job. Well done, Ian Bishop. All right. Now, uh, final thoughts, gentlemen. Let's go from left to right. Tino Best, West Indies coming home with a 2-0 victory. Like I said, and Fazir correctly said, we're not quite sure what will happen with the calendar yet. The proposal is not 100% secure. But your thoughts on 2021 for West Indies in Test cricket? Um, just continue to, 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 to work hard with these guys. Um, whoever chops and, 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 and replacements that need to be made. I don't think they're going to be wholesale um, changing. Just maybe one or two batsmen coming in. Maybe a Ross and Chase come back in. Um, I, I, I just seen one player uh, and Jason Holder, basically like two players, maybe two players, three max coming back into the starting 11. Uh, but look, just to continue to, to, to gel this unit, continue to, to everyone continue to fight for them play because um, that's what you want. You want. You want guys to understand that they West Indies cricket does not belong to one person. And guys got to continue to fight for their play. And I just think that they want, they can build, they, they can build on this. And they have to build on this. And, and the board needs to, to, to find other programs to help um, our cricketers, um, not only um, physically, but also mentally. I think that what has done, what has worked terrifically on this tour is just the mental capacity of all the players. And, and, and just need to just focus on that mental aspect of the game. I think that when it was in my time, it was never a case of talent. It was always a case of mental. And once you can get that, that mentality focusing on the cricket, I think that West Indies cricket will be okay. Okay, thank you. And uh, Johnny Barron, uh, how can the West Indies capitalise upon this uh, series victory? Um, it's been quite fantastic. I think they need to take the energy of this group of players and, and move it forward into the home and, and domestic season. I, I think keen competition for places is all you could ever want. You only have to look at a side like England, who are struggling actually in India, to see how many players are knocking out the door and, and how many people are rotated. And, and that kind of situation is, is what you need for West Indies cricket. You need people knocking on the door who can come in, as they have done in Bangladesh, and perform immediately. It's been stuff of, well, beyond your wildest dreams in terms of how the debutants have gone on and have shaped this series. It's been absolutely fantastic for them. And Fazer, speaking of regional cricket, we should have quite a regional season because the IPL will be going on, but those players that play in the IPL don't necessarily play regional cricket anyway. But I think it's going to be a very competitive regional season this year. How do you view it? Yes, it should be, because I think it will send a message, uh, this, this series against uh, Bangladesh and the Triumph, that there are always options, that there are places open. And I think, just to take a, a, a line from Phil Simmons after that excellent first test victory, where he said that match is done and dusted, we now look to the second test. Yes, there'll be elation, yes, there'll be celebration, but now they've got to put this behind them as quickly as possible, because you can't linger uh, too much on what you would have achieved. You try to build on it, but don't linger on that. Believe that automatically, because you've won those two test matches in Bangladesh, it's going to be plain sailing for the rest of the year. Because as Tino would have experienced, as so many of us would have experienced over these many years, you see some bright spots, you see some bright sparks, and then things head in the wrong direction. It's important for the Westerners to build on this with the understanding that it doesn't get any easier, it actually gets tougher throughout 2021. Well said, Fazir Mohamed. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Look, it's been a great season on tour in terms of the uh, Bangladesh series. We're going to have so much more for you throughout the, the year, so stay tuned 
But I can tell you that everyone uh, will be happy with how things have ended up after that debacle of the one-day series when the West Indies lost 3-0. Well, thank you so much, Tino Best, Johnny Barron, Fazil Mohammed, and of course, uh, Vinan Mamchan, who we didn't hear from today, but he's also one of our correspondents. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me on tour. We'll be back perhaps when the West Indies are moving again, or perhaps when they're right here in the Caribbean. Goodbye for now. Jump up, people, are you ready?